in continuing digital painting and kind of learning how to directly apply pixels to make our own unique artwork, <clears throat> we started with reference of what we wanted to paint. I'm doing a portrait of Nina Simone from the shoulders up. We learned about kind of laying out the sketch with lines or just blocking it out with speed painting. And then customizing our brush and doing kind of two things with that customized brush. Making it a lower opacity so we can use it more to blend and usually making the brush a little bit smaller. And we get to this. In Photoshop, you can set up those layers as much as you want, you know, from the sketch to the shape painting on top to all of the different areas of refined painting that I built on top of that to the eventual kind of final painting. And this is what I'm going to work on to try to kind of finish it off enough so that we can post it as our digital painting. One thing that I kind of like to play with is to turn off everything except those final paint layers. And you'll see what you're still relying on the base painting to fill in. So it's interesting. The first thing I did were those eyes and those lips in the base painting. And so I haven't had to really approach those much at all. So that might be places where I can finish it off. Because the base painting was done with a non-custom brush. Whereas everything else, even when I zoom in close, it feels not exactly like, but similar to if I was touching it with an acrylic brush and softly painting these edges. So if I want to get rid of these, some of these hard edges, I want to bring finish to everything. So we created brushes. They are down at the very bottom. So I have my dry brush, my wet brush, my very wet brush. And because I'm opening up Photoshop again, I might need to go to my brush settings and change them because it's not so much the shape of the brush, it's the dynamics. So the shape dynamics, I want to turn on size jitter so it's not always the exact same pressure. I want to change the control to pin pressure so it can go thick to thin, you know, like that based on how hard I press with my tablet. Tablets do make a difference here. And then I also want to have an angle jitter. This to me is very important. And a roundness jitter. And maybe just increase the minimum diameter a little bit. You can even play with some of these settings like flipping the X jitter. And just to get a more interesting brush. And then you want to play with an opacity of around 50% and a brush size that you think is useful. And I might want to work on different sections at different times. If I want to zoom in quickly, you can turn on window and then turn on your navigator tool, which is very helpful because you can zoom in and move around without ever having to go off your brush or even hold down the space bar. And you can also see the, the whole of your painting all at once. So while I'm on this brush tool, I'm on this custom brush tool. I have a flow of 90 and opacity of 50. I'm going to take kind of some of these highlights. I'm going to work between them. And especially where I see hard edges coming through. In fact, I might even turn off my base painting layer. So I see these areas that can be worked. And I can always do this on a new layer as well. You can separate out your layers as much as you like. I just recommend you lock them as you go. Ah. So that it doesn't let you paint on the wrong layer. So, so much of our blending is just done by using this low opacity. Bless you. And blending around it. And looking at my reference. And then throwing in some interesting colors as we go. 
because those help the mix. You're always pretty safe using red around the eyes because it gives a lot of life to them. Especially things like the tear ducts. And at 50% opacity, you're always pretty safe building up your, your tones. Because it builds slowly. And at this stage, I have so many different colors that I'm playing with. It just becomes a lot of fun to, to work between them. I don't feel like I get stuck in any kind of mud anymore because I always have reds, oranges, purples, greens, things I can pull from. And if I ever don't see them in my own palette, I can grab them from my reference. Now we talked a lot in the last few videos before the weekend about trying to bring a finish to everything, not just working on the areas that are most uh, naturally engaging, like the eyes, like the mouth. But every once in a while, we have to go back there. You can see the flat painting, the shape painting coming through here. So I can strengthen and sharpen and make decisions about this now with my custom brushes on top. You're always, like I said, safe using red around the eyes especially around the tear ducts, kind of carving out the shapes you want. And this goes for animals as well. We tend to anthropomorphize animals, especially in art, give them expressions, tilt their eyebrows, make their eyes look shiny. I've even seen sympathetic digital paintings of things like reptiles and lizards and snakes. It's just all part of the, the ability of art. You can add in what you want. And though it's a good technical challenge to try to match the reality of the photo as much as you can, you have freedom in painting to find your own shapes, your own colors, your own uh, effects. So though I tend to tighten up at the end here, that's also something to be resisted. And even though we're 
finishing up. I don't want to zoom in too much and get too lost in little details. Still good to see it from a distance. Now, I kind of like the crispness of that highlight that comes from the base layer there. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And then I might actually use a tool we haven't used in a while called the clone stamp. And I might bring that highlight. Just the sharpness of that highlight. Into this eye. And I'm clone stamping and just copying it from the other eye. And that works for eyes pretty well, especially for highlights, because they're reflecting the same thing. And then, of course, I can always paint around it. Change it up. Now it's time to look at some of these other areas. And in the time we have, which is about the first hour of this class, try to finish this off. Also going to turn on the gray background, especially for things like the highlights and the, the earrings, that's going to help me to see the, uh, the value changes I need. That can be pretty hard to see on white. Might use that clone stamp again. Just to get the sharp highlight in the earring. Remember, just using option to steal color. And I might even go to a lower than 50% opacity as I'm finish finishing this off. So you don't feel like you're risking anything that you've already established. Instead, you're just working between. The lips were another place I can use more refinement. I hadn't done much. You know, you see all that gray in there. So much of that's just from the base painting still. And if you want, you can actually use the navigator on your reference as well. And this is my primary reference. So that can help me get some of these nuanced shadows and shapes. And like I said before, we've got all the colors just within our painting now. So this core shadow on the lips. Always kind of reestablishing highlights and shadows as you go. At these lower opacities now that we're refining the painting. I'm bringing color in where you can. 